us what was some of the frustration level early on with the way they were stringing those drives together and just not being able to get off the field yesterday. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's, it's always frustrating when you king off the field. Um, some of that, you know, comes down to just we got to execute better as players. You know, calls are calls, but at the, at the same time, we've got to make the plays when they're there. Um, and obviously, we'll look at it as a team and, and go from there. But um, I would just say off the top of my head, just as a player, you'd like to see us execute a little bit more just so we can get off the field there. After those first three drives, the defense played a lot better. What was the biggest difference, would you say? We made some we made some adjustments um, schematically. I think that kind of helped a little bit, um, and then kind of when you get in the game, you kind of get a feel of how they're trying to attack us, and so then you can kind of anticipate a little bit more. Um, so that kind of helps too. But I think some of the, some of the changes we made schematically kind of helped us for sure. How difficult is their play action game to defend when it feels like they go back to the well on that play yeah. after play? It's it's hard because you got to respect the run game, right? They got a good running back. Um, they have two good running backs, and so you got to respect the run game. You can't. You know, you can't be too soft in the run, so you got to make sure as linebackers you got to get downhill. But then you also got to read your keys and, they, and understand when they're trying to get to that boot, when they're trying to get to the perimeter and certain things. So it is it is frustrating, but it's also one of those things that's part of the game. you got to read your keys and you got to be crisp on it. Yeah. The, the disparity between first-half defensive performance and second-half just seems to be more evident or growing or whatever. What do you make of that, and, and, and how can you solve it? You know, you, you have these yeah. big second halves, but, you know, the one solution is to not have as – as big as first half, yeah. I, I, if I knew the answer, I'd tell you. I think we just got to come out earlier in the games and, and execute at a higher rate early in the games. Um, that's the biggest thing I can say is, like, we just got to play better in the first half. I don't know if there's any true answer to it because it's not a different different set of pl players on the field in the second half than there is in the first half. It's the same players, same coaching staff. So it's just we got to play better in the first half. We got to figure it out. A more intense start to practices, maybe you would have more intense start to games. Does that? Yeah, I mean that could be part of it too, right? Coming out faster, having a little bit more intensity, um, a little more intentionality about what we're doing too, as well in the beginning of the games and also in, in the beginning of practice. It could, it could be a lot of different things. Um, yeah. Nick, after you watch the tape, the game went in drive for Minnesota. You guys had opportunities to get off the field over and over again. What you see in watching the film that? kind of you want back or that you found most frustrating about you guys' inability to end that drive? Oh, man. Yeah. That was a rough drive. I think it just we just got to get off the field on third down. There was, there was some times where we had opportunities to make plays. And I think even in some of like the second downs, we got to minimize those. Like even to check downs, we got to make sure we come down and, and tackle and, and knock it back so that they don't have a, you know, a third and short or whatever the case may be. But they were doing some things like get into the ball really quickly just to see our, you know, show our hand and see where we were in. Um, you know, so there's, there's ways we can kind of combat that a little bit. But I, in the end, it's going to come down to like making the plays in the fourth quarter. We got to make those plays in the fourth quarter to win the football game. Um, that's the deciding, that was the deciding drive, I mean, dr drive for the game. And we got to make those plays, yeah. Your schedule this week features a practice the day before a game. Have you ever practiced the day before a game before? Yeah, I probably have. I mean, I've, I've been a part of some weird schedules, so I probably have. I've I've gone I've gone through. We didn't even we had to walk through the entire week, so I've I've seen it. Yeah. Is there a difference from the way you guys are doing in-game adjustments to how you're doing halftime adjustments? Uh, a slot maybe maybe and maybe not. I think obviously when you get in the halftime, it's easier to talk to everyone. Like you know, offense. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, D line linebackers and and safeties when we're all in corners we're all sitting in the room together we can kind of it's easier to talk but when you're on the sideline you got the you know we're kind of spread out a little bit because we're on the bench so it's kind of hard to make those adjustments and everyone kind of hears so yeah it's probably easier to make adjustments in halftime just because everyone's in front of you and you can talk to them whereas um, on the sideline we're all on the bench and so it's kind of hard to go you know area to area and then you got to worry about you know when the defense is up the next drive and stuff like that. So I think it's easy to make adjustments at halftime just because you have time to do it and you can get in front of everybody and talk. You know? It's still early, but this defense seems kind of undefined at this point. I mean, what's your just a general take on, on the way things are going? Because I think it, it seemed like you could hit the ground running maybe a little more than you have at the start of the season, even though you were first-year defense. What, what do you make of, of where you are and what do you see looking, you know, looking ahead? Um. Uh, I think I think one thing is is already evident is we know how to we know how to finish we just have to finish with you know better execution that's going to be 
I mean, anytime you lose a game, you're always going to say, you've got to execute better, right? And that's just kind of – and if you win a game, you might even say there's times where we could execute better. But I think what you're starting to see is, like, we, we find a way to kind of come together as the game goes on. We find a way to finish games. We, we, we came back in the game, right? We were down, what, 21-3? I mean, I think you, you see a defense that's, that's hungry and wants to, wants to compete and find ways to compete late in the game and keep us in the game. I think that's kind of where we kind of held our hat. But now we've got to find a way to execute – you know, earlier in the, in the games, first, second down, first quarter, second quarter, and find ways to, to make those plays when they're there and then also take the ball away earlier. I think we got a – what, Kendall got us picking, what, third or fourth quarter, somewhere around there? I mean, you know, we can find ways to take the ball away earlier in the game. We can we can set the offense up with shorter fields. You know? I apologize if this is, like, a dumb question, but going back to, like, the – the, their drive where they scored to make it 29-22. Mm -hmm. Just given the time and um, how much time the offense would have left, was there any talk on the sideline or in substitutions about letting them score just to be able to give you <laughs> No. All right, every, our intent was to get a three-and-hour takeaway. That was the intent. Um, I mean, even like on the sideline, some of the conversation with the players was like, uh, before Kendall got his pick, literally that drive, before that drive, we're like, hey, we get a takeaway here, we can get the league. And we did that. Mm -hmm. He said, we get another one. We can win the game, and we didn't get that right. So, no, I don't, that wasn't an intent to let them score. It was intent to get off the field, you know, and let our offense kind of do their thing. How aware are you when you're on the field that Kirk Cousins is getting out to start completing 17 straight passes? I am, uh, I'm not paying attention to like his completions more. So I'm paying attention to how they're attacking us. Um, and so that's that's probably more what I'm focused on. I think it was interesting because they would they would come to the line really quickly. Like sometimes they weren't even huddling. And they were just trying to just see what we were in. I think I noticed that more than I noticed like how many completions he was having. Um, obviously, you can they're, they're marching down the field, so you know they're having success throwing the ball. But I think more of those, more so, just understanding the operation and kind of how they're attacking us is kind of what I was paying attention to. Yeah. Well, you just go into a shell or get depressed after you let three touchdown drives up and three, you know, three for three they went. Did, what was it like on the sidelines? Who was who was kind of picking everybody up over there? You pick your poison. I think everybody was just. Energy was high. I mean, the, you got first you got guys like Eddie Jackson, right, who's made so many plays in the NFL, made, he's won so many games in college too as well. You got Roquan who's made so many plays in the NFL. Like you got a lot of players that have had success in the league. Uh, there's not a guy counting themselves out or counting the team out when it comes down to the situation. Everyone wants to compete, and we know if we get teams in the second half, you know, we, we know we have a chance. So no one was down. No one was, you know, in a shell. Everyone was ready to go out there and play and, and turn the game around with a takeaway. Honestly, it's really what we're thinking about. Yeah. Sorry. Is that rare that guys weren't pointing fingers on the sideline? Or, or in your experience, is it yeah. usually like guys are still pretty uh, In my experience, I've seen a lot of finger pointing, right? And, you know, that's the sign of a bad team, to be honest with you. And there wasn't any finger pointing. It was more so, hey, let's get this figured out. Like, you know, so, no, we'd have, I haven't seen finger pointing. Even, even think back to the Giants game, it wasn't any finger pointing. It was just like, hey, let's figure out how we can make our plays and, and make our adjustments so we can, you know, make a run at this game. Yeah. Who's leading that on the sidelines like yesterday? Was there anybody that you remember that was leading? Off the top of my head? Yeah. Uh, not not really. I mean, you know, uh, Bo Jacks had some things. Um, Rose had some things. Justin Jones had some things. You know, I think it's, it's a combination of a lot of different guys.